You have now discovered the Paradise Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the podcast. I'm your host, JT. It is a pleasure beyond anything that can compare or measure to know the people out there are connecting with this podcast. The people like you are out there feeling me, out there connecting with me, out there pressing the play button, out there buying my merchandise, my books, my t-shirts. I'm just praying I ain't got t-shirts yet, but I do got books. I do got books, and we will talk about that later on in the podcast. For those of you guys who are listening to me through Spreaker, for those of you guys who have been listening to me through iTunes, all of you guys, and also, I know a portion of you guys have had to switch to listening to me through Spreaker or YouTube because I cut off my SoundCloud. Well, today I might actually restart my SoundCloud. The only reason I kind of am reluctant to have my SoundCloud is because I kind of feel like it's a waste of money because I feel like I haven't lost that much viewership from either platform, whether just going strictly with Spreaker, whether including um, SoundCloud. But because I care about you guys and because I care about getting any listen from any area possible, I might go ahead and restart my SoundCloud. So for those you guys, make a hand clap for that. I might start the um, I might start the platform back in SoundCloud again. It's just that fourteen dollars, man. You know, the fourteen dollars is either going to me doing a SoundCloud or to me actually just going to see Tarzan today, which I have not yet. I did end up going to see Finding Door yesterday. I've really been slacking in the movie area. But what's been going on with you? What's been going on in your world? I'm always curious, man, to hear what's going on with you. Please, let me know. Don't be scared to have the conversation with me. You can review. I mean, you can leave comments in the reviews on iTunes. You can comment on this link in Spreaker. And you can also talk to me through um, any other platform, be it YouTube, Spreaker, anything else. I'm always open to have a conversation with my people. So, we're going we're gonna to get right into the herald with the news of what's going on today. Um... This, I have two things I want to talk about as far as news goes. One is talking about um, a fatwa, which is a legal ban in Saudi Arabia issued against Pokemon Go. And because they feel it's some form of gambling, which is a quote unquote forbidden in Islam. And second is uh, a very, very confused African-American male who I don't even know how he became a doctor, which is a sign that white privilege really doesn't exist in some areas named Ben Carson, who called Hillary Clinton the devil. And after that, we're going to have the discussion talking about, you know, just religion, what's going on with religion and religious practices, in my opinions, about some things that religion gets wrong, you know, since we just want to get all into the thing, worship. But first off, let's have a conversation with the guys and just kind of chit chat for a minute. So. Um, have any of you, have you ever bought an eye touch before? Do you know anybody who has an eye touch? Okay, I'm asking because I decided that I'm going to take my money and instead of getting a Samsung Galaxy or getting another iPhone, I'm going to just go ahead and get another eye touch because I used to have an eye touch before, but now they have the eye touch sixth generation that came out last year, but I'm going to be using that to communicate with you through Periscope, through make YouTube videos, because the laptop that I have right now, granted, it has a camera, but it doesn't it doesn't really convey the right image that I want. And plus, I can't use the um, pic collage and video, um, video editor the best way I can with the iTouch or iPhone comparatively. So I'm going to start communicating with you that area. So this, I was just asking about that. And it's kind of interesting nowadays because there used to be a time where well, I don't even know if there was, well, I like to imagine that when I was a little boy, talking about eight, nine years old, when I, when my teeth were still white, not yellow, there was a time where if you bought a device and by the next year it became outdated or so, you generally had to get that next device to keep up with the times. But nowadays you can get a device that's two, three years old and still be doing, working efficiently as you can. You know, when I talk to you and I make videos for you guys outside of the podcast, a lot of the times... I've been doing it bad lately because I have this I, um, laptop which has terrible quality and I had a K7 LG from Metro PCS which had terrible quality as well. But before then I had a Samsung Galaxy at 1080 HP and it had 70, 750 a recording ability. So when I have that it kind of worked a little bit more better. So when I was so but it was interesting because after that broke I bought a Samsung Galaxy 4 and that was 
two, three years old, but it, it could still record at almost the same quality as the Samsung Galaxy S6, which just came out last year. So, more of the story is you really don't need to buy that much stuff to keep up with the times. Although I will say this, let me when I get my first first real real check of broadcasting and broadcasting from doing this, I'm probably going to buy. I'm probably gonna buy at least. I'm probably gonna buy. I'm probably gonna waste at least about twenty five thousand dollars on electronics. You know, whether it be a Samsung Galaxy and get me a little iPad and give me an Apple TV, all of that. I've been trying to convince my mother to get Apple TV simply because you can use the cable feature with it, which is why I don't even see the point of having cable TV anymore. You know, but you know, it is what it is. You know, she wants to stay back in time. She still loves the, she still is used to the concept that she has. So, I mean, it kind of goes both ways. I don't know. But anyway, let's hop right into the Herald with the news. So, first, what's going on? Top clerics, which is a religious position in Saudi Arabia, have issued a fatwa, which is an official ban, banning the playing of Pokemon Go as a form of gambling. The decree was issued by General Secretary of the Council of Senior Scholars on the website of the General Presidency for Scholarly Research, an Arab news reporter today, which I was getting the reporting from. The edit actually updates an existing ban on the Pokemon card and video games before they morphed into the mobile phone virtual reality game that has basically destroyed all social lives, period. Although, really, I will say, a lot of people critique Pokemon Go. We say that a lot of people are wasting their time playing the game. But from what I've seen is, it has it has increased a lot of interaction between people in different social groups. When they go to these parks and downtown districts and um, old cities and just start meeting up randomly and start playing. And I love that. You know, there was one night um, before when I still had my last phone before I had to send it back to eBay because it broke. I went to the library to use the Wi-Fi there because it was it was it was 11 p.m. I went out there. The library was closed, but you can still use the Wi-Fi if you stand outside the door. Yeah, I know I'm really that ghetto. So I was standing there and I was using the Wi-Fi. And keep in mind, this is 11 11 p.m. at night. Out of nowhere, you just start to see random little white kids, random little Asian kids, random little black kids, random little Mexican kids, just coming out of nowhere, just gathering in the parking lot, walking around. They got their uh, Nikes and shoes and hat dressed up like Ash Ketchum from the original Pokemon. And you start to hear the conversation start between them out of nowhere. Like, oh, you're looking for Pokemon? Yeah, bro, dude, totally. I'm looking for Pokemon, bro. Oh, shit, bro. Let's stop it. You start hearing street niggas come out of street, little street niggas come out of nowhere. Hey, bro, hey nigga, hey, bro, you looking for Pokemon? Hey, shit, nigga, not fuck, nigga. Come here, nigga. Let me out of the car. Nigga, I'm looking for Charizard right now. Nigga, they got a Charizard out here, blood. Oh, mama's nigga. I'm looking for that motherfucker. Which is, by the way, if you can tell me we can find a Charizard out because they didn't find it that night. But anyway. It was fascinating to see how Pokemon has brought together people from all walks of life simply because they enjoy the same game. That's what I love about Pokemon. So, when I saw this issue, that fatwa, this fatwa issued by Saudi Arabia, which if you want to look it up, it's fatwa, F-A-T-W-A, number 21,758. Now, first off, any country that got at least 20,000 different laws of which you cannot do, there's a fucking issue there. Excuse my language. I'm just being real with you. That's just crazy as it is. In America, we got basically 13 that we kind of know. Don't kill, don't steal, don't rape. Basic shit. You don't need 21,000. That's just small stuff. So anyway, and they say that because all the Pokemon, all they said, they, their, their logic behind banning it legally was, although Pokemon Go does not involve the winning or losing of money, the fatwa notes that it violates the gambling ban because it includes gambling practices, like competing for cards of different prices with the stronger side winning the card. If the player, other player does not want to lose a card, he or she must pay its price. And um, I don't see this is the problem I never got with religion, um, religion or just any situation. It amazes me how they can take the simplest simplest activities and take them completely out of context and say this is an issue I don't understand that now it'd be different if they banned Call of Duty in, in Saudi Arabia that's different because I can see that that game is very violent I think it's kind of strange personally that you have a bunch of kids walking around happy to run back home after school and spend four or five hours in front of the screen shooting people's brains off that looks kind of strange and I'm one of them little niggas too I love playing Call of Duty I like Assassin's Creed actually but Speaking of Islam, but 
I've never, I always wondered how you can take that so out of context. Like, it's just a game. You know, enjoy. It's kids having a good time. Let them enjoy themselves. That's one thing. Second thing is, this isn't a factor that's just in in Islam. It's also in Christianity because I can tell you from experience. And keep in mind, I'm an African-American male. I grew up in a Christian household, despite the fact that my father was, uh, my stepfather was an undercover, undercover homosexual. That sounds like a movie, don't it? Undercover, undercover brother, undercover homosexual. But anyway, my mother at one point when I was nine years old, she said, I couldn't watch Pokemon. I couldn't read Harry Potter because she said both of those things were demonic. In her eyes, both of those things were demonic. Now, granted, my stepfather loved scary movies and stuff like that and demonic movies. So they would force me to be up with them all night for four, for six, five hours watching The Exorcist, Ghost Ship, and Final Destination back to back like some sick ass uh, marathon. But I can't watch Ash catch a Pikachu or an Ash catch a damn tr- a re- or try to make Pikachu turn into a Raichu. No, there's something wrong with that concept in my eyes. But you know, it is what it is. I think the problem is. <clears throat> is the people who are in charge of these religious institutions or the people who the people who are in charge of these religious decrees and these religious laws the people who do have some um say so in whatever religion be it christianity or islam i think the problem is is they're from a different time that my generation that your generation because you're probably the same age as me or just a little bit older or younger they're from a different generation than us, so they have a hard time understanding these new concepts. They have a hard time understanding Pokemon. They have a hard time understanding Digimon. They have a hard time understanding Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just like when Harry Potter came out, and about after a year after its popularity, after it went globally successful around the world, you would go to certain bookstores and see people taking, riding, buy, and they would take the books and throw them in piles and burn them and let me tell you what's funny about that because it was mostly white people doing this this is the funniest thing about how white people riot see when black people riot and we burn some shit we'll break into the store take the materials out and burn them in the middle of the street white people don't do that they will actually buy (laughs) they will actually buy the product buy the product Throw it in the middle of the street and burn the own money. And these Harry Potter books was not cheap. I remember buying the, the Harry Potter Goblet of Fire for twenty nine dollars, and this was in two thousand. It was probably more than that. I got it off of a deal because I got it at a book sale at the school. These was not cheap books, and you really buying it. That that is that is the that is the the epitome of somebody who's hating way way too hard on the situation. You really going to spend your hard earned money to buy some shit you do not like and burn it out in the street just to make a point, just to prove a point? That was retarded as hell. It's just like it's just crazy. So, but the 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 con, but the similarity that Harry Potter and Pokemon Go shared was these were things that came from our generation. They didn't understand it. They ain't saying anything in Saudi Arabia. I imagine it's the same. I imagine it's the same situation in Saudi Arabia. You have these religious clerics and these religious judges, these religious pastors, or whatever term term they use for that position out there. You have these people who don't understand Pokemon, who don't understand Digimon, who don't understand any of that. So it's kind of in, it's 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 just it's certain. I promise you, what's going to happen is after these were the people who are the leaders. Islam is going through a very transformational state. It's under a lot of attack right now because of the radical terrorist groups that you have who claim to be Muslim and all that. So I feel like what's going to happen is in 70 years after the former religious leaders who are in charge right now die and all that, I promise you this situation won't happen again. Because as we get older, Islam is starting to get more modernized. As we get older, Christianity has gotten more modernized. Far faster than Islam, granted, but it is. So I think they're stupid for that. Um, Sheikh Salik Al Fazon, a member, um, a member who's the member of the Council of Senior Scholars at, of Saudi Arabia, I want to invite you to come on this platform and have a conversation with me. If you have a translator or if you speak Arabic, either way, because I want to, I want to have a conversation with you because I, I think it's just a mis, I think it's just misguided vision on a lot of it, on a lot of issues. So I want to talk to them about that. That's one thing I want to say. Now. Second thing I want to get into in the Herald last bit of news is Ben Carson called Hillary Clinton the devil in a recent speech that he did. Now, granted, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the context of his speech was comparing her to a man named Saul Alinsk. I don't know, Saul Alinsk. And 
he's um, Sarlinski's um, I'm pronouncing it wrong apologize but she was comparing to him and she said and he called Hillary Clinton the devil now here's what I have an issue with that if you're not familiar who Ben Carson is Ben Carson is one of the few African American candidates that we have um, for nominee to become president last year and the fact he was a Republican which is odd in itself in and of itself um, he's a doctor his wife looks like um, uncooked pancake mix her name's Candy, but she looks like liquor, like nasty liquor. It's like, I'm not mad at you having an opinion and comparing Hillary Clinton to whoever you want to compare her to, because granted, our views of the Clintons in totality has changed in the last two years of this election and all, you know, but I, one thing I want to say to Ben Carson, this is my honest opinion. I'm not even going to get all into details. I just want to say this. Ben, you have volunteered your support to Donald Trump for the presidential election in 2016. You also... Who the hell are you calling the devil? That just is so contradictory to me. Like, how could you call her the devil? But then you're, you're supporting the person who on a large major, 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 major view of the American, Canadian, Colombian, South American, Brazilian, African, European public is... The fucking how is the fucking Antichrist? I just th- I just spoke with an author last week from Britain, United Kingdom. Granted, it's a sixty-seven year old white man, very famed author, author named Alan Freeman Jones. He felt the same way I feel about Donald Trump, which means it's not just me on a racial point. Everybody thinks this motherfucker is full of shit. So how can you get in front of a public crowd and say Hillary Clinton is the devil? I mean, come on now. Like, that don't even make sense. I want you guys to look it up. Like, watch the videos. Look, Ben Carson called Hillary Clinton the devil. I feel like he's just retarded. I feel like this is just is stupid. I feel like he's kind of dumb on that aspect. I don't know who the hell... This whole condemnation of... This con- whole condemnation of... Um, condemnation of... It's always, it's always kind of strange to me to see people who are Republicans com- try to condemn Democrats because... Granted, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. You know, I just have my opinions. I'm not Democratic or Republican. I'm human rights. I'm pro-human rights. Before I'm even pro-black or any of that stuff like that, I'm pro-human rights. I'm pro-fair treatment to either human being or animals regardless. And, I don't know, why the fuck I say animals regardless? I wonder if centaurs exist. I don't think about that. Like, if you had a cross between humans and animals, it probably would be a centaur or a mermaid. You know, that's another conversation. But, anyway... I also think that the problem with, um, the problem, I don't see, you know, I got into an argument on YouTube with this guy and we were talking, he said, he was talking about how he was, um, he hates liberals, he hates progressives. I think I talked about this yesterday. The guy told me on YouTube, his name is Stephen Cook, he hates liberals, he hates progressives, he thinks we're full of shit and he feels like we're always trying to defend Islamists. Now, first off, I hate the term Islamist. I don't like the fact that you're trying to group all people who are part of Islam. When you say Islamist nine times out of ten, you're saying, that you're talking about the terrorists who claim to be of Islam, and you're grouping up and saying Islamist. That's a dangerous term. I've never took a terrorist group that happened to be Christian. I've never took a crip or a blood or a gangster disciple and said they're all Christianists because they are killing people, but they happen to come from Christian backgrounds. Because if you don't know this, and I'm talking to you right now, most gangs come from Christian backgrounds. Most gangs in America come from Christian backgrounds. Most of us come from a faith-based background. I got a father who probably killed seven people in between now and the time that he was in the gang. But he'll still go to church every Sunday and will, won't even say a cuss word behind the name, behind the name or behind the name of Jesus. So it goes both ways. So I don't like that term. But back to what I was saying, he said that he hates liberals, he hates progressives, he hates, but hates us because we're defending Islamists. Now, I watched the interview that um, my man, salute to D.O. Hughley, he has a new book coming out called um, The Oral History, Obama Racism, The Oral History, is something like that. I forgot the actual title of it, but D.O. Hughley is a famous African-American comedian, king of comedy from Los Angeles, a real, excuse my term, a real nigga to the fullest. And D.O. Hughley um, did an interview on AOL, uh, AOL YouTube, and he was. He talked about something. He he made a great, interesting point. He said, "It's impossible. It's impossible for you to trust to be a true American and say that you're against liberals because 
all of you, regardless of the racism, the history of the establishment of the United States as a country was behind the concept of liberalism. So really, he said that these Republicans, these Donald Trumps and Ben Carsons and Ted Cruz's, if they were born back then, you wouldn't even be you wouldn't even be for our country. You would be for Britain. You wouldn't even be for you wouldn't even be for the values that set up this nation, except the racism part and except the conservatism, granted, which came later. The United States is, and this is me talking now, the United States is whole, whole, I'd say, ideology, our whole concept of where we find our identity in the world is based off of us saying, regardless with white people, regardless with black slaves, even to slavery, is based off us saying, ho, oh, so we got to do what? We got to do what? Okay, n- F you. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. You can even go back to the British, to the um, American Revolution. Where we broke apart from Britain. We wanted to break apart from Britain and we wanted to be our own country. You can even go back to slavery. Black people. When we had the abolitionist movements, where we had um, slaves running away, when we had the slave revolts of Fort Negro and, and that one fort. I keep forgetting um, the similar. What's that fort? And then um, that other fort that was in uh, Florida. It was a Negro fort of runaway slaves who rebelled for a long time. Our whole, even with the civil rights movement, our whole history, our whole ideology that even goes past racism and the conservatism that still operates to this day is based on us saying, you know what, I got to do what? Nigga, no, I'm not doing that. Okay, you know, okay, 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 cool. I, I, no, I'm not doing, I'm not doing that. So for you to be, for you to say you're pro-America, for you to say that you're representing this country, and for you to say, quote unquote, by Donald Trump, I want to make America great again, but you to hate liberals, for you to hate liberals for you to hate progressives that's retarded because you're going up against the ideology that makes this country great i want you to tell me what you think about that because i can go on that situation and talk about that for all day i can talk about that to my to i'm red and blue in the face which would be interesting if black people could turn blue i don't have that i haven't had that experience yet but i want you to tell me what you think about that you know, I'm always interested to hear what people say. I'm always here interested to hear what you guys have to say. You can tweet me at JT's Boldest Dream. You can also Instagram me at JT's Boldest Dream. But you know what's interesting? And, um, I was talking to my friends about this also. Um, it's interesting that when we're referring to social media as far as the actions, we refer to messaging somebody through a social media platform as like Instagramming, Facebook me, tw- tweet me. But if you speak in a different language, which I speak Portuguese, they'll say, like, message me on Facebook, message me on um, Twitter, message me on Instagram. Like, for example, I'll say, hey, tweet me. But they'll say, eu vou te mandar mensagem pelo tweet, Twitter, which is mean I will send you a message through Twitter. So it's very interesting. This is a little interesting difference. Now, second thing, I, last thing I want to get into, this is a discussion moment for the day. I want to really create a sound effect for the discussion moments that we have, you know. I want to create that. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I want to create. Anyway, we're going to talk about um, religion, and I want to talk about your opinions about religion. So, let's hop right into it. I wonder if I can find a good sound effect for you guys, you know, just to have something to play with. Oh, uh, let's see what we got here. Mm-hmm. All right, huh? she, she might as well try. Let's have some fun. So anyway, um, just to talk about religion now, because I want to have that conversation. Um, I'm always one. I'm always wondering, you know, as a society, and I'm not talking about just in the United States. I'm talking about just in the modern day age of the world. We've come so far through technological innovations, through political movements, through these new ideologies that have really, I say, helped us develop as a people. And I'm really wondering, is there going to be a need for organized religion in the coming years? I'm always wondering that because, you know, I'll I'll have to, you know... Once again, I come from a strongly Christian back, a strong Christian background. Consistent, my grandmother consistently wakes up at five o'clock in the morning every day and plays with and prays with her prayer soldier. Uh, my mother's faithful, a faithful follower of Christ. Uh, everybody in my family just takes religion to the highest degree. And when I study history and I look outside of my culture and I see how history has been, 
how Christianity has been used and viewed, how Islam has been used and viewed as more of a guidance system prior to innovations in science, prior to innovations in thought processing. I wonder about the relevance of organized religion nowadays. You know, like, before we, like, you know how you go to church. I'm talking to you now. You know how you go to church, right? And you'll have something wrong with you. You might be sick. You might have a situation where um, you're getting, you, you want to get a really good job and you you want to get a really good job. You want to get a new car. You're about to be homeless or something like that. Some scenario, some situation like that. And you happen to go to church. And when you go to church, you know, you ask the pastor, hey, can you pray for me? My mother's in the hospital. She has cancer. I don't know what's going to happen. Hey, can you pray for me about this situation? Hey, can you pray for me about this situation? There was a, even though you have, even though, and if you're not familiar with this concept, if you didn't grow up with a religion or a strong religious um, background, or even just didn't go to church that much, then, you know, you might not be familiar with this, but this is just a very common concept in black and white households, regardless of any in America. Um, even though you'll go and have them pray, even though you'll go and have them pray for you, even though you'll go have them lay hands on you and whisper words of hope and inspirement, truthfully, You'll still go to the doctor. You'll still talk to your credit agent. You'll still talk to people, the professionals, to do the job rather than just going to the pastor. I feel like pastors and preachers are now people who just sell us hope rather than solutions. And what we fail to fail to realize is when you go back to the time when the Catholic Church was at its strongest, when you go back to the time where the words of an Islamic preacher was mean more than anything else in the world when you're in when you're a follower of Islam and you're sitting in front of him listening to this man. You gotta remember that in those times they weren't just preachers, they weren't just he they weren't just people who sold you hope. They were viewed as healers. They were viewed, they were viewed as the people who have the solution to your problem. There was a time where you wouldn't even go to a doctor. You go to a preacher and supposedly through the miracles and through the divine gift that he has from God he would provide the potion for your problem. He will, he would heal you. His hands were the hands of the healer. And personally, in my opinion, personally, from my personal experience, I've never seen that happen in real life. I've never seen a pastor heal a person. I've never seen a pastor when somebody came up to them and said, I injured my leg. I can't walk right now. I have to have surgery. I've seen many a pastor lay hands on that person or any other. I haven't seen any results from that. But there was a time where, like I repeat again, that was the only hope that certain individuals had for healing or anything else. So I'm wondering, what's the effectiveness of religion now? If the pastor, if the heal, if the role of a of a divine healer, a divine doctor has been replaced by a real doctor, what's the hope? What's you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the point of that anymore? I feel like I don't know. It's just interesting. I do you understand what I'm saying. I hope you get what I'm saying. Like, I don't. And I'm not attacking pastors. I'm not attacking preachers. But I am wondering what's the point of having those people. Pre- What's the point of having those people in those roles if if we already have substitutes for those other roles? Now, I will say this. Even though I'm talking mess about preachers, even though I'm talking about, you know, basically calling them ineffective in modern day reality, I will say that it does help to have somebody who can sell you hope. It does help to have somebody who can promise you and give you emotional and motivational speech and uplift. I feel like I feel like also, you know, even to even like you can say that even about me, you know, I'm basically I'm doing a career right now where the only reason that you're having a conversation with me is because I'm either giving you hope because I'm giving you good conversation. I'm just providing you with company. Maybe that's what preachers are. Maybe preachers are professional providers of good company. Honestly. You know, and, you know, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I want you to tell me what do you think. I'm really having this conversation because I'm curious in knowing what do the people think. I feel like one of the other ways I do like the effectiveness of a church, be it Christian, but more Christian, because I don't know how, how, 
how much intercommunity activities happen with um mosque in the Islamic mosque. But I love it when you have a church that actually participates in the community with trying to uplift it and trying to have, you know, feed the homeless programs, trying to have um uh, welfare programs to provide provide housing and food and homes for single mothers. I love that. You know, one of the churches that I go to out here is Dream Center, which is a very popular uh, church branch in L.A., Sacramento, Fresno, all these cities in California. And when you go there, the experience that you have, I love, is because every month they always at either one of these at any at any location they always have feed the homeless programs. Provide milk, honey, and cookies for mother single mothers. Have um sit, have programs where they help men who are home who are homeless or don't have a job. You know, train them, teach them how to use a teach them how to make a resume. You know, try to help people who have been ostracized by society and reassert them. Help people get inserted back into society. I respect churches that have those that operate like that, and I love that. So. There are some aspects of organized religion that I do like. I do like that it brings people together in some areas, but I will say the things that I hate the most is because we operate in a contemporary time, these past time concepts are ineffective. Like, for example, like the whole thing, how most monotheistic, monotheistic religions have a thing against gay people, which I don't. And it's not all of them. It's not all of them, but it is a lot of them. Most monotheistic religions, you know, Islam, um, Islam, I want to say, um, I'm forgetting one that's out of Islam, Christianity, and there's two more that it kind of touch on that. I forgot what they're called. I, I did a podcast talking about them a while ago. Um, they all have a thing against homosexuality. And I don't even think, and the problem is, is the issue I have about that is, it'd be different if it was word of, words of wisdom from the creator that gay people were evil. It'd be different if it was that. From what I've seen, from reading the Bible, from reading a few pages, from looking at a few pages of the Quran, I feel that is not a divine concept that comes from the heavens. I feel like it's just a misunderstanding on man's part of what being a homosexual is. You know, like when they say men shall not lay with other men, I don't feel God said that because I don't feel God would make gay people just to be gay and not to be a crime. I don't feel you would put that desire in a man's heart unnaturally. You know, it's just like when you have people who are, they, they compare when you go to certain countries, not here, we, we move past that point. There's certain countries, particularly in the Middle East, and I hate to put you on blast if you're a Middle Eastern person listening to this. You go to certain places, they're, they compare being gay Almost to being a um, a crime of murder, a crime of a crime of stealing, a crime of theft. The difference between those two, a strong difference, I'm going to say, and this is going to give very opinion, sound very opinionated. Most people who I know who are gay, including people in my family, including close friends who I've known my whole life, generally they've been gay since I remember them. I remember being five years old, and there was one boy when I lived in Visalia, California. There was a boy named Matt. You know, a little adorable little boy, but he was so, so, so feminine, so feminine. And we were very close friends. You know, he used to invite me to come paint my toenails and shit like that. Granted, I wasn't with that. I didn't like that idea. You know, I, I except pink. You know, I did paint a pink once, but that's besides the point. He loved, he loved painting his toenails pink. He loved wearing dresses. He, he loved doing stuff like that. And... I never had a problem with it. I never, I thought he was just a nice kid, but I did notice that that was something. When I look back on it now, I noticed that that was a character trait that was innate in him. That wasn't something that some demon came and possessed him when he was walking in front of Wendy's with a, a drink in his hands like, oh shit, exorcist moment, I'm gay, hey. Yeah, you know, that didn't happen. Now, versus when you have somebody who's a murderer versus somebody who have a person who's a stealer, most people who I've read about who were mass murders and stuff like that came from backgrounds where their environment, their, they were in substandard living that shaped how their mind could be molded into a killer versus the man. Like, for example, the man Iceman, famous murderer of the, uh, from the, of the 20th century for mafia, for the mafia. 
he can even though he killed he he attested and confessed to killing 200 plus people he also admitted that he came and he wasn't defending himself but he was just being honest and telling his life story he came from a background where his father beat his mother repeatedly every day his father actually killed his brother i'm talking about his younger brother threw him down a, a flight of steps he grew up being beat molested all of these things so when you're put in this situation you can see how his mind can develop into the mind of a murderer just naturally you're put in a situation where in an environment where you know it's crazy the, I, you can be it can, same thing with these people who are stealers same thing with people who are robbers you can argue that those two situations of being a murderer or a robber were people who were put in situations where they had to change and had to Something changed, something shifted and molded their mind to where they became a murderer or a killer. You can put a homosexual in any situation in the world. You can look at homosexuals in any cultural situation, any cultural society, anywhere. And nine times out of ten, it just came from them just being like that. I don't feel, I don't know about the God that you know. I don't know if you feel about the God that you worship. But I do feel that my God would not make a, would not make people to be a certain way to desire a certain sexuality desire activity with their own with their own gender so much but have it be a sin and make them go to make them go to hell for it I never understood that uh, you know we can have each other's we can have different opinions about this you know we can have arguments about this it is what it is you know I just feel like that's just my opinion on things. I just feel like I feel like religion got a lot of things wrong simply because of misunderstanding of man. You know, and the catch about that too also is is when you go to um this look just to take another misunder another cons- a part of religion that's misunderstood. There's a lot of racism, a lot of classism, a lot of a lot of classism in religion, elitism in a lot of religions that if you compare it to today, you'll see it a it wouldn't make sense. You know, it's just like how in the Hebrew Bible, one of the big things is it's taught you have to kill the Canaanites. You have to kill the Canaanites. It's basically imply, imply, even though it's not officially recorded that God had the Israelites wipe out the Canaanites totally. And the crazy thing about that is not only is that genocide, not only is that racism, not only is that anti-Semiticism, because if you read, they also had an issue with the Ken- with the gods the Canaanites worshipped. The crazy thing about that is, is modern day archaeologists and also scientists have have went to those areas where these the Israeli quote unquote empire and Israeli nation supposedly had dominance at, and they saw that the Israelis were the same race as the Canaanites. There was no difference between them. It literally was just them taking their own shit. It'd be like if you were black, right? And out of nowhere, a group of light-skinned niggas got together and said, You know what? Fuck all these black niggas. We light-skinned. We killing all these niggas. Bro, you the same as us? No, nigga, we light-skinned. We killing all these niggas. All of them. All of We killing all of them. I don't care. You know, so it's the same situation. I feel like... A lot of the, a lot of these, a lot of these religions have old concepts and old ways of thinking that really are just misunderstood nowadays because we've evolved as people. And it's certain, it's certain concepts that come from Christianity, that certain concepts that come from Islam. That if we want to move forward into the future, if we want to improve unity across the world, I feel like we have to drop some of these ideologies in the contemporary times. I feel like, I mean, I feel like we have to drop some of these ideologies to move forward in contemporary times. There's certain things we have to drop. I feel like personally that in Islam, how they have that burqa shit, how women have to wear burqas over their head. I feel like that's a misunderstanding of context of text in the Quran. And I feel like they should stop that. I feel like in Christianity, this thing about how we're banning homosexuality and how we're against that. I feel like we should stop that because Dio Hughley, I was going to quote him on this. He made a great point. Homosexuality didn't even make it to God's top seven sins. It didn't make it to gluttony, envy, pride, lust, none of that. So whether you put, so whether he said, hell, he's like, I've never seen anybody brand self second helpings, never seen anybody brand that. So whether you put too much food or too much dick in your mouth, it's all the same in God's eyes. I want you to tell me what you think. I want to hear your opinions about this podcast. I want you to connect with me and let me know how you felt about it. I want you to let me know 
What were your feelings about we, what we talked about today? And just to do a recap of what we talked about, you know, we talked about the situation how Pokemon Go is banned in Saudi Arabia, which makes no sense to me because they ain't banned how they ain't banned uh, flying. It's amazing how they can ban Pokemon Go, but they can't ban uh, flying 21 year old wh- white girls from the uh, United States out there to fuck every once in a while. But, you know, that's just me. I'm not. I'm, and when I say that, I'm talking about the rich people in Saudi Arabia who really ain't keeping it real and real is uh, Muslim. Um. Also, I talked about the situation how Ben Carson's misguided pancake kissing every night wife looking ass uh, called Hillary Clinton the devil. And I'm not a Hillary Clinton supporter. You know, I just have my opinions, you know, whichever, whatnot. I, either way, I want you to tell me what you think and thought of either, either, um, either opinion. And we talked about the effectiveness of Islam or Christianity or any monotheistic religion or organized religions in modern day contemporary times. We talked about all of those, and I want to hear your opinions on all of those subjects, all of them. My people, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you guys. My name is JT. This has been one of the best episodes of the Paradise Podcast, and I'm not just saying that because I might go see Tarzan. I'm saying that because every day I wake up in the morning, I'm able to talk to you guys. Every day I wake up in the morning, I'm able to have a conversation with my people, with the people that I love. It's the best feeling in the world, and this is why I live, this is why I breathe, this is why I eat and sleep and strive every day to make my world great and to connect with you better. I cannot wait for the moment in my life when I'm able to come to your city, come to your home, and come have live shows there, come have open community discussion with all my fans, all my people from out there. I cannot wait for that moment. I cannot wait, and I know you're going to be there, and I just ask you one thing. Please, please bring walnuts and cashews because I'm buying an otter and otters love those. With that that being said, my name is JT. This has been the Paradise Podcast. My people, I love you. I have my support every day. Support me on this podcast. Like and share with your friends. Thank you.